everybody. Thank you for your continued support for Johnston County Public Schools. Johnston County Public Schools is one of the fastest growing school systems in North Carolina. With this growth brings the need for new schools. We are very excited to open a new elementary school in the fall. With this excitement brings a need to address assigning new students to this school while also addressing overcrowding issues in elementary schools in the surrounding areas. We hope you find this presentation informative and we appreciate your input as we move forward with this process again. Thank you for your continued support for Johnston County Public Schools. Hello, I'm Dolores Gill, Chief of Operations and Communication with Johnston County Public Schools. Johnston County Public Schools is opening a new elementary school in the fall of 2021, and it's gonna be located on Lynch Road. And the opening of the new elementary school will require that boundary lines be adjusted in order to fill the seats of the new school. And it will alleviate some overcrowding in surrounding elementary schools. There are impacts for East Clayton, Riverwood, Cooper, Selma, Corinth Holders, and Riverdale Elementary. And further, there's significant overcrowding in two of our middle schools and a unique opportunity to increase the seats field at one of our other middle schools. The middle schools with impacts are Riverwood, Archer Lodge, and Clayton Middle. Johnston County Public Schools has been collaborating with the ORED Laboratory from NC State, and they monitor and they plan growth for the school system for over 20 years and ORED and numerics work to complete our capacity tables each year to conduct land use studies for future bonds and they assist in adjusting lines for the schools based upon data. The presentation will give you an overview of the process and how changes to school attendance boundaries are developed and then show you the impacts to your area and potential impacts to where your child attends school. Johnston County Public Schools will provide an online survey for you to provide us with your input on this proposal. The survey will be open from August 20th through August 28th and will be located on your school's website and on the district website. Your input will be provided to the Board of Education and the Board will vote on final attendance boundaries in our October meeting. After this vote, students who will be affected will be notified and the board typically allows a grandfathering process for the students in the highest grade to remain at the school if they're being reassigned and providing their own transportation. At this time, Mr. Thomas Dudley from the ORED Laboratory at NC State and Mr. Mike Miller from Numerics in Charleston, South Carolina will guide you through the next part of our presentation. We appreciate your commitment to our school system. Thank you, Ms. Gill. So I'm Thomas Dudley with ORED and ITRI, and I'll be talking some today about the redistricting process for JCPS. All right, so we'll start off with the timeline, looking at uh, where we are today and what our next steps are looking forward. We'll briefly touch on growth in Johnston County and why that leads directly to the need for new schools and redistricting. Uh, from there, we'll acknowledge some of the considerations that your board has as they look to make a decision or decisions related to redistricting or student assignment in your district. And then with that, I'll then hand it over to the, my colleague, Mr. Mike Miller from Numerics, who's going to talk about the proposed attendance boundaries, as well as introduce the community survey. So here we are in between August 20th and August 28th, uh, holding the virtual community meetings uh, giving a little bit of additional information about these proposed scenarios. And uh, this, again, is an excellent opportunity for you to voice your input in the process. Uh, the next board meeting that we will be presenting at will be September 8th, where we'll be presenting the community input, the summaries of the community input, the uh, sort of second draft of the attendance boundaries, which incorporate board feedback as well as input from the community. And then we have that October 13th will be the final board vote on the attendance boundaries. And uh, there's some additional items after the 13th, such as naming the school itself, the new elementary school in the Thanksgiving area, as well as appointing a principal to the new school before the new school opens in August of 2021. So everyone uh, as part of these meetings knows about the significant residential growth that's occurring within Johnston County. And just to highlight a couple of key points here, we have Wilson's Mills is going to have 2,500 either single family detached, single family attached, um, multifamily units such as apartment complexes or townhomes 
uh, so overall 2,500 units coming online by 2029. And then also in Clayton, there's significant growth as well with nearly 9,000 of those units coming online just in the next five years. And it's that growth, it's that um, sort of driving factor that creates the need for new schools as well as redistricting to help balance the populations and the overcrowding at some of your existing schools. To be a little bit more quantitative about it, we have a chart here that shows your forecasted membership looking, looking forward over the next 10 years. So this is broken down by level as well, elementary, middle, and high schools. And what you'll see here is that the elementary schools are really the level that accelerate the fastest. And that's because of the uh, sort of reality that it's young families that are moving in with young children that are either at the elementary school level uh, or lower. And then that population then ages up through the system, creating gains at the middle and high school levels as well. Uh, next to look at a, a more local example, we have Riverdale, Riverwood, East Clayton, and Cooper. And here we're comparing your enrollment or your membership to capacity. How many seats do you have available overall in this region? And you can see there's a gap in between those with the capacity being the purple line underneath and membership being the line on top. Again, that's just number of students. And the bracket to the right, the red, uh, new ES indicates the capacity of the new elementary school. So you can tell immediately that there's a need for those seats today, but then that there will also be a need for additional seats beyond the addition of the new school in the Thanksgiving area. Here we have sort of a parallel uh, kind of chart for the middle school, again, just looking in the northwest section of the county. So you've got the capacity, which is flat for this level, and the membership, which exceeds capacity today and which will continue to, uh, to grow in that discrepancy. Now, there is no perfect solution when it comes to redistricting in this region, in particular, because you're not adding additional capacity beyond the recent addition to Archer Lodge. So there is no perfect solution. What we're, we as the planning team are trying to do is to alleviate the need for as many mobile units at some of your schools as possible by helping balance those student populations and get more students back into the buildings. So the good news, uh, you're opening that new K-5 elementary school in 21-22 uh, in the Thanksgiving area that will help provide relief to overcrowded schools in the Northwest. And that comes with the challenge of creating an elementary school attendance zone for that school, as well as uh, modifying the attendance boundaries for other schools to better balance utilization at the elementary school level, both now and in the longer term. Uh, it's also a logical time to adjust middle school boundaries for 21-22 to better balance utilization in the area and get rid of some of those mobile units. From there, uh, that means that there's the opportunity to align the elementary to middle school feeder patterns to the extent possible. And I say to the extent possible because aligning feeder patterns, aligning that percentage of an elementary school that goes up into one middle school is only one of many considerations. So to be specific about, uh, or to get a little bit more information about clean feeder patterns, so that's when an entire elementary school feeds into one middle school, that's a clean feeder. If that elementary school is split among different uh, middle schools, that would not be a clean feeder situation. So we do everything that we can to try to ensure that they're clean feeders so those cohorts are not split up as they move from le one level up to the next. So that's just one of the considerations that's listed here. Um, and these are a list of considerations that boards have to grapple with and uh, from our experience working with boards across North Carolina these are not meant to be a comprehensive list but these are many of the concerns that the board has uh, concerns that parents may have or other community members as well so please just keep in mind uh, there's a lot going on at the same time here and there are a lot of different priorities and considerations that folks have as they look to try to create that perfect uh, assignment plan so with that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Mr. Miller, Mr. Mike Miller from Numerics, who's going to give us an introduction to the proposed scenarios themselves. This is what we're calling draft one, show the scenarios themselves, and then also introduce the survey. Mr. Miller. Hey, Thomas. 
Before we present the proposed attendance boundaries, we will discuss what is involved in the assignment planning process. Our goals, to determine attendance boundaries for a new elementary school opening next year. In addition, your board has asked us to look at a comprehensive balancing of school utilization for schools in this area. To examine elementary to middle school feeder patterns, and as true with every assignment planning process, to respect and preserve neighborhoods. Assumptions. To accomplish the goal of a comprehensive balance of utilization, six elementary schools and three middle schools are affected in draft one. We will be using brick and mortar design capacities to help reduce the number of mobile units on some school campuses. And the forecast we use includes numbers from expected growth in new residential developments in the area. Caveats, there is no perfect solution. Draft one is a concentrated effort by the planning team to balance the goals of the board as a workable assignment plan. School crowding due to growth will still be an issue in this area. The considerations that Thomas spoke of in a previous slide do not always align well with each other. In fact, they conflict and those conflicts may influence the drawing of attendance boundary lines. And furthermore, transportation and accessibility issues may influence the drawing of attendance boundary lines as well. As a reminder, the proposed attendance boundaries presented here are drafts. They have not been approved by the Board of Education. The current boundaries for six elementary schools are shown here. We will use utilization as our metric in comparing these scenarios. Utilization is a measure of how crowded a school is. It is equal to the number of students divided by the capacity of the school. And since balancing utilization will help remove mobile units at some school campuses, we use the design or brick and mortar capacity. As measured in 2019, the current range of utilization is 53 points from a high of 127% at Riverdale and Cooper to 74% at Selma. These 2019 numbers include pre-K students and Selma is included as a K-4 school in 2009. It is worthwhile to note that the average utilization over these six schools was 107% last year. And the estimated average utilization in five years is expected to be 103%, including the capacity of the new school. The draft one proposed attendance boundaries for elementary schools are shown in slide 12. The range of utilization for the proposed boundaries has decreased to 33 points, with a high of 108% at East Clayton to 75% at Selma. There is a detailed street level map available in a few slides, but let me take this opportunity to point out some of the characteristics of this plan. The new elementary school in the Thanksgiving area will impact Corinth Holders, Riverwood, Riverdale, and Selma. In addition, Cooper and East Clayton have adjustments to their boundaries in order to try to buy, uh, provide balanced utilization over the schools. The strengths of this elementary assignment proposal or it provides relief to Riverdale Elementary School, which was a primary goal. It provides more balanced utilization among seven elementary schools. And it aligns a feeder pattern for Selma Elementary to Selma Middle School. Weaknesses, geographic features such as rivers and roads limit some assignment options. And there is still a need for elementary school capacity in this area to accommodate future growth.
You can use the link in slide 14 to view a detailed street level map of the proposed elementary school boundaries. The map includes the current elementary school boundary as a red line. The proposed attendance areas have various colors. The current boundaries for three middle schools are shown here. Again, using brick and mortar capacity, the current range of utilization is 33 points from a high of 107% at Riverwood and Archer Lodge to 74% at Clayton. Average utilization over these three schools was 99% last year. And the estimated utilization in five years over these three schools is 106%. The draft one proposed attendance boundaries for middle schools are shown on slide 16. The range of utilization for the proposed boundaries is decreased to 13 points from 33 points with 109% utilization at Riverwood and 96% utilization at Clayton. There has been adjustments to the boundaries between Riverwood and Clayton and adjustments to the boundaries of between Archer Lodge and Riverwood. Some of these adjustments were made to toward, toward balancing utilization. Some of these adjustments were made to accommodate clean feeder patterns, as we'll see in a future slide. The strengths of the middle school plan are it provides more balanced utilization among the three middle schools. It better positions Archer Lodge Middle School to accommodate expected growth and it aligns elementary to middle feeders for six of the seven elementary schools. Weaknesses, there is still a need for middle school capacity in this area to accommodate expected growth. Use the link in slide 18 to view a detailed street level map of the proposed middle school boundaries. The map includes current middle school boundaries as a blue line. The proposed attendance areas are various colors. The link on slide 19 will allow you to view a combined elementary and middle school map with the proposed areas. The map shows the alignment of elementary and middle schools for six of the seven elementary schools. The line has various, I mean, the map has various colors for the elementary schools and a blue line for the proposed middle school boundaries. A look at things to come in this process. Based on input from the community survey, which we will see in a few slides, the planning team will make adjustments to the draft and present a second draft to the Board of Education, along with results from the community input survey on September 8th. The board will have an opportunity to deliberate the attendance boundaries and a final vote is expected on October 13th. The proposed attendance boundaries presented here have not been approved by the Board of Education. The elementary and middle school scenarios are the first draft in the assignment planning process. The second draft will be presented to the Board of Education on September 8, 8, 2020. It will incorporate feedback that the community provides through an online survey. This is your opportunity to provide input into the assignment planning process. The next slide includes a link to this online survey. Please take the time to provide your input. Use this link to fill out the online survey. Your input is very important and we thank you. <laughs>